Hi there. Let's talk about resources in TwinGate. So a resource in TwinGate really maps to a single asset you're trying to protect or a group of assets. And those assets can be declared in different ways. Everything I'm going to show you here can also be done with the API or with our command line interface. But for the purpose of this video, it'll be easier to show it via the admin console. So you're going to want to head to the network tab under resources. And to create a resource, all you have to do is simply click on add resource. Now, the first thing to know is that a resource is attached to a remote network. So you'll have to pick a remote network that you have in your TwinGate account. And then you'll have to decide whether you want to add a resource that is a DNS style resource or a CIDR or IP style resource. Let's start with DNS style resources. So the first thing you'll have to specify for resource is a label for it. The label can be any text. It can be anything. It doesn't have to actually be unique either. And you can use the label to sort resources. So you can come up with a naming convention if you, if you wish uh, to call all of your resources. In this case, we'll stick to something relatively simple and just call it my server. Now, if we want to define a DNS resource, the first thing you can do is define a simple, fully qualified domain name. That would mean, for instance, server one dash abc dot corp dot int. This is a valid DNS resource uh, that will map typically to a specific asset, but that's not the only option you have for DNS addresses. You can also use star characters and question marks in the fully qualified domain name to, if you wanted to use a star, add a pattern in your DNS address, which would match zero to many characters. So technically this would map server one dash ABC, or you could do something a little bit more granular, which would be using the question mark character for one single character, regardless of what that character is. So if you wanted to declare a single resource that maps to multiple assets that themselves map to the naming convention server a number dash a text, you could combine both of those approaches and have a DNS address that is made up of a question mark and a star in the name. Now the second type is uh, CIDR or IP style resources. So in a very similar way here, you can declare a single resource by its IP, 192, 168, 150, for instance. But that's not the only option. You can also declare an entire CIDR range. So you could do, if you wanted to map to a single Twingate resource, all of the IP addresses under 192.168.1, you could do this. And that would map to all of the assets under this uh, CIDR range. The last thing you can specify when you declare a resource is port restrictions. So you can make sure that when a particular service gets uh, becomes accessible via TwinGate, the service will only be reachable through certain ports. The options here are a single port, a list of ports, uh, or a range of ports. You could do also something like, there you go. You don't have to use all three. You can use just one of those approaches, but you have the ability to uh, use ranges, single ports, or a list of ports in this case. Now, the final point about resources is that when you do create a resource, you will be able to assign the resource to two different aspects of TwinGate. You'll be able to make your resource accessible for groups of users, which is what you're seeing down here. You'll also be able to make your resource accessible to a service account or service accounts if the resource in question 
should be used by a headless client, for instance, in the context of a continuous integration or continuous delivery pipeline. That is about it for resources.